Hey guys, I'm going to put together a little video here for you of um, kind of a bozo move that I made. Um, what the subject is, it's an air intake for a 12 elf Cummings. Modifying, um, building an air intake that's going to m modify the existing uh, intake in the respect that it's going to add more air. Um, I'm going to take the existing air intake off and put on something that I'm building. But that's not what the video is about. The uh, video is about a bozo move that I, I made. Um, and hopefully, you know, maybe people can learn from my mistakes. Um, what I did was I, um, it's built out of tube seal and I, I kind of mocked it up onto a plate that it's going to be mounted to. Uh, bolted to and I actually bolted it onto the plate mocked it up and tack welded it in position on the plate Then what I did was pulled it off of the plate so that I could weld it out uh, reposition it so that I had good access or Good weld positioning while I was making the welds on the, on the manifold I should have never done that because what happened was after taking it up in position and then pulling it off and welding it out, it heated it up so much it distorted it and it distorted the band. So the first clip is gonna that I'm going to show you is me kind of explaining it. Now this clip is going to end abruptly because the battery ran out on the camera. Uh, but the second clip will go directly into what I did and what I shouldn't have done. Um, so, not a video on fabrication per se, a video on kind of things that maybe you should look for if you're uh, fabricating something out and it's got to have some fairly precise uh, positioning. Um, maybe you're going to want to make a, some kind of a fixture jig that's going to hold it in place while you're welding it out. So um, here it goes, and it's going to be a pretty short video, So, but I'll, I'll bring you back to the first clip. This is uh, that intake uh, for the Cummins engine that I'm uh, building. Um, I, I explained it in another video that uh, the air supply for. Just going to shoot a little video here. Um, I'm fabricating up this air intake for uh, Cummings, um, an old 12 off Cummings. And uh, what it's going to do is supply air to it better. Um, originally, um, this is a runner plate that goes on top of the head. There's only one air intake port and um, it has the grid heater in it, so it's kind of restricted. Um, so what I was going to do is, is make this air intake runner that's got two ports in it. Um, it's going to supply a lot more air to it, um, both in back and more towards the front, so the air going into the intake runner on the head is is more distributed and uh, gets back towards the back cylinders better. What the problem was is I um, put this in here on a jig. Um, well, I put it in there. Let's not call it a jig. I, I put it on here and then... Um, tacked it all out, and then pulled it off and welded it out off of it. And it was a huge mistake. It warped it terribly. Distorted it. Let's not call it warped. Let's call it distorted. So it still sits flat, but the bolts um, when you line the bolts up uh, in the front, and when I say the front, I mean uh, where the grid heater goes, and that's towards the front of the engine. Um, 
the bolt holes in the back are way off. Um, it distorted the badge. So, lesson learned. Um, if I continue to make these, and I don't think I will continue to make them in this style, um, I possibly could make them in that style, but if I did do it, I would uh, probably um, curve the outside edges here um, to get a better linear airflow into the down into the intake port. Um, but I, I kind of digress there. My thought is, uh, if I do continue to build them, I'll have to build a jig for it so that it holds it in line um, when it gets welded out um, and doesn't distort it from the heat shrink factor. Um, I, I was kind of really uh, pissed when I saw that, you know, I mean, I spent a lot of work on that. I'm not saying that I can't fix it and I'm not going to use it. Um, I'm just saying that uh, it's kind of another wrinkle and uh, I'm more pissed at myself for um, kind of not thinking of that, how bad it would distort it with all the welds that I had to do on it. But anyways, um, my lesson learned um, if I post this, hopefully, if somebody is doing something similar, that they take that factor into consideration, too, and, and uh, don't end up making the same mistake that I did. But anyways, I'll bring you back. But anyways, guys, lesson learned. Um, maybe it'll help you not make the same mistake. It'd be pretty easy to um, make uh, something that a plate that goes across those two. Now they're on uneven uh, parallels. I, I mean, uh, they're parallel with each other, but on d different planes. So, but you could still make a, uh, come up with a plate that would hold it in place. Um, because what it did was it, uh, it expanded at the top and and, and and warped it at the bottom, so it came in. Um, so as long as you've got a plate that's fairly rigid when you weld it out, and uh, maybe it doesn't have to be on there all the time because there was some areas where I need to make welds where a plate would sure, a uh, plate bolts through it would sure interfere with the welds that I was making. Um, but you could come up with something, put it on there, uh, maybe remove a bolt at a time to uh, weld out an area. Um, maybe you have to pull off the plate and put it back on right after you're done welding. Uh, but it would probably keep it from warping like that. So anyways, lesson learned. Hope you don't make the same mistake. I'll bring you back and I'll bring you back and show you um, the build on it. Whether I, I, I'll show you the fix that I came up with for it, whether I use it or not. I'm actually thinking of going in a different direction with it right now. So, um, but I'll bring you back one way or another.